This is the pack stove from Simple Theory Gear. I've been using it for a good number of months now, and I think it's time I gave it a review. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the pack stove, keep watching. Okay, before we get into the review itself with the Simple Theory Gear pack stove, there's a few things I want to mention first. So to begin with, I learned about this stove some months ago, and after learning about the stove, I reached out to Mac at Simple Theory Gear to see if he could help me out with the shipping to Canada, because uh, something this size and this weight does cost a lot to ship to Canada from the United States. So Mac and I talked, and um, what we arrived at is I paid for the stove and Mac covered the shipping. So Mac, once again, thank you for doing that. And that allowed me to get a good look at the stove and what it could do for me. So, you know, the first thing that struck me when I, when I received the stove is just how simple a design it is. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot went into this and Mac has done a lot of testing of a lot of prototypes to arrive at this design. And he hasn't rested there, as we'll talk about in a minute. But it's just just one piece of metal basically. Now there is a grill that we'll talk about in the middle or a fire plate and a removable pot stand on the top as well. So I guess you could say total it's made out of three pieces of metal but simple super simple made and super heavy duty and again that's what we uh, what I mentioned when I said it, it costs quite a bit to ship. I'm going to give you some of the statistics now only because it's relevant to the the two different chambers that are in the stove but of course everything's going to be listed in the show notes below in the video description so uh, I'll just go through this quickly and if you want to find out more have a look below. So the overall weight of this is 11.4 ounces and, I'll, and again, I'll put it in metric as well as in imperial in the show notes. The overall height, top to bottom, is 5 and 7 eighths inches. The width is 3 and 7 eighths inches. There are two burn chambers. The upper burn chamber intended primarily for wood and the lower burn chamber pr intended primarily for solid fuel. And the upper one is 3 and 1 quarter inches tall or deep, however you want to look at it. And the lower one is 1 and 1 half inches deep. So that's the basic statistics on the stove. Now, shortly after I received this stove from Mac, we started having an exchange of, of uh, thoughts on the stove back and forth and even some online video discussions back and forth about some of the results I was getting in my testing. And Mac, uh, is, that's one of the things I want to say is Mac listens. If you have a thought, if you have an idea, if you have a suggestion, if you have a criticism, Mac is absolutely open to not only hearing that, but incorporating that. And if it's something that you find wrong with the stove, Mac will make it right for you. That's, uh, that's one of the best things about working with the Simple Theory gear is just how well Mac responds to his customers. Okay. One of the things I had noted was the clearance at the top of the stove. I thought that maybe the pot top of the stove could be just a little bit taller for a couple of things. One for the alcohol stove, but also to get a little bit more ventilation of, around the top for, for exhaust air when using wood. Well, Mac agreed, and in agreeing, he came out with a, an improved design, which is the one that he is now selling, and that's this one here. Yes, I have two. The second stove Mac sent me, he just, he just sent it to me, quite honest. It was his prototype stove for the one that he is now selling on his website. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two. I'm going to put this one aside because this is the original stove that Mac was selling, but that is now no longer in production. This is the stove that Mac is selling along with his prototype speed plate, which I'll explain in a second as well. Okay, so once again, this is the version of the stove that Mac is selling now. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to talk about what Mac's philosophy is on why these stoves are designed the way they are. So to begin with, Mac is a very experienced and, and very uh, consummate woodsman. He, spent, he likes canoeing. He spends a lot of time canoeing and a lot of time in the woods, of course. So what Mac was looking for was something that was simple. What he didn't like is to have to work with a stove that he, he likes to refer to them as puzzle stoves. And actually, I've adopted that term as well. The stoves that come in multiple pieces that you have to all fit together and hopefully get them right so that they don't fall apart in use. What Mac was looking for was something that you could pretty much use with gloved hands or very cold hands in the winter that wouldn't take any messing around with. Something you could just take out of its little stuff sack, 
put it down and get a fire going in it. That was the first primary thing that Mac came up with and he absolutely exceeded to that. It doesn't get any simpler in design. The other thing that Mac was looking for was somewhat of a modular design so it wouldn't take up too much pack space. So he designed this original one around the Stanley Adventure cook kit and it's designed so that it fits inside with just enough clearance to, down inside. So you can see they partnered together almost perfect. Well, not almost, absolutely perfectly. So that was part of the design. Now he recognized that not everybody liked using the Stanley Adventure uh, cook set. I'm not sure why, it's a great cook set. But <laughs> any of the 32 ounce water bottles, and this one in this case is the Clean Canteen, also fits down inside. So you have a few choices here. Now, Again, not everybody's going to cook with the 32 ounce water bottle. What about putting this inside of a, another pot or something? Well, I have found, now I do use a stuff sack, I'm just not going to put it on for, for this demonstration. This is my well used, well loved, well, well, well used, that's what I can say about it, 12 centimeter zebra billy pot. And in its stuff sack, it sits down inside, the cover can go on and it absolutely fits. So you don't have to use a pot that's small enough to fit inside of the stove. You can fit the stove inside of any of the larger pots. So this is just one example. I found that uh, when I went through my uh, lot of pots at home that it fit in a good number of them and too many for me to share with you right now. So this is the one I brought out to show you that it does fit in other stoves or other pots, sorry. Okay, so the stove was also intended for use with a couple of different fuels, primarily wood, but also with alcohol and also with solid fuel tablets like Esbet. So the upper chamber that I mentioned reaches down to here and it has a side feed port so that you can either feed longer sticks in at a constant rate or you can fill it up and do the uh, uh, a Swedish fire torch type of uh, an arrangement with vertically stacked sticks. Either will work just fine with the stove. So that's one way of using it. If you use it with an alcohol stove, which I'll explain in a minute, you use it in the top, but uh, it's built around the Trangia or any of the Trangia knockoffs. So I have an Alex knockoff that I'm going to be demonstrating with it today. But what you do is you take the cover off of the stove, put that inside, put the alcohol stove on top of that, and then you can put the pot stand on top and it will give you just the perfect distance, but I call pot to stove gap as well. Flipping it over, that's where your solid fuel tabs are going to go. So they'll sit inside right on top of this and it works out to be just the right height at one and a half inches. It's pretty much an, an ideal height for using with solid fuel tabs. Now, uh, there's some discussion about that. Some people feel that the height should be a little taller. So what you'll find that in a new generation stove that Mac is working on now, he has increased that gap just a little bit. It's not that it won't work in its current configuration. It's just that it may, and that's what testing is all about, may work a little bit more efficiency efficiently if you raise that gap just up a little bit higher. Okay, so what you're going to notice right away with my stove, if you look at the stoves that are on Mac's website, is that there's something missing right here. And by way of example, if you turn it upside down, you're going to see that there are these protrusions right here which are intended to lock in either of the plates, the boil plate or the speed plate. So um, this is the regular boil plate, and what I mean by regular, there is a speed plate now, but this is the one that Mac came up with originally, and they're intended to lock in on, um, right now I'm doing it on the bottom of the stove, to lock in so that they don't fall out and your pot would sit on top of that. Ideally, or originally, the, the uh, Stanley Adventure cook set would sit on top of that with an open hole for the flame to come in contact with the bottom of the stove. Uh, what I found was that, well, a couple of things, and I'll talk more about the pros, and there's a few cons that we do have to mention as well, was that it was making it challenging, me, challenging for me to lift this pot stand off if I was using an alcohol stove especially uh, in order to snuff the stove out. So between uh, that and the fact that I wanted to have more airflow at the top and more exhaust room at the top for for hot air and flame to come out, I actually just cut those prongs back a little bit. Now, there's still the locking ability on mine. I'm not recommending you do this, but I just wanted to show you what I did and explain why. So you'll notice that it is different a little bit. It still sits on top, 
and it will still lock into place just fine and work the way it's intended to. So there's no loss of performance for me having done that. In fact, there is, a, well, I feel a performance increase for having cut those back. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is the original boil plate that Mac had built. Uh, in discussions with Mac, what we learned was that, or what I, I came up with anyway, that Mac, and Mac came to the same conclusions, was that that ring was acting as a bit of a heat sink when used with alcohol because there's a lot of metal there and the alcohol stove wasn't sending its flames just up through the hole it was coming in contact with all that inner ring as well so there was quite a bit of metal absorbing heat from the alcohol stove and it is a real thing because we in tests it was a little slower and i'm going to put all the tests that i did in the show notes or in the description as well if you want to see the alcohol tests that i did with the stove for burn times and boil times and all that type of thing i won't uh, do that all in the video right now but I had discussed with Mac, could we remove that inner ring somehow and, uh, you know, come up with a little me less metal? Well, Mac uh, considered that for a while and he did come up with a design, but he made it uh, obvious that when you start to remove metal, you increase the chances of warping on the piece of metal as well. So it's just to be clear, this, this new plate can warp a little bit. So here is... Well, this is the prototype, but the production models are virtually identical to this. This is that exact same ring. Let me show you the original ring. With the center ring removed and the tabs that left behind were pushed upwards. And uh, so the new, then I, I actually bent those up myself because uh, uh, they, didn't, they didn't come that way when Max sent me this prototype. And what that does between the two things is you have less metal in the center here that's going to act as a heat sink when used with the alcohol stove. And uh, when you push those tabs up, you actually increase a little bit of height. So now that when it lays on top of the stove like this in the locked ring uh, position, those tabs are equal with the top. Now, what's the advantage here? With an alcohol stove, that will now give me one and a quarter inches. Without it, if I turned, and by the way, you can still turn this upside down and use it the way that it was, uh, or at the height it was originally intended to. That would give me one inch to the top of my alcohol stove when it's sitting on its lid, of course. But with it up like this, it gave me one and a quarter inches. The advantage? Well, I know that we often say that a one inch gap from stove to pot is ideal in terms of performance. But in my testing, I actually get better boil times and better fuel efficiency at one and a quarter. Now, it could be that it's the stove and pot combination, but for this stove and the combination of using this with the Stanley Adventure cook kit, that one and a quarter inch pot to stove gap uh, works out better. It gives me much better, not only faster boil times, which is only relevant. I mean, how fast does it have to be? But it also gives me better fuel efficiency, which is important if you're trying to conserve fuel. Okay, so those are the basic arrangements. One of the things that Mac and I talked about was, uh, how about using this with pellets? Could you use this with wood pellets? Because that's something I try with most of my wood stoves. And the way it is set up now, it it doesn't work out ideally because a lot of the pellets will come just come flowing out of the feed port. But there is a modification. Mac came up with one, I came up with another. I'll show you what I came up with. And it makes a big difference. Now, it's not designed for using with pellets, but it will work with pellets just fine. Just don't overload it. And that would be my caution. One cup of pellets is more than enough for most cooking needs, like boiling water at least. And uh, you don't need to overfill this with two cups of pellets and have it go for an extended period of time. The challenge is, is airflow. It's always about airflow. And two cups of pellets tend to choke themselves off in terms of airflow, where one cup of pellet seems to be just the right amount for use in this stove. Now you can play with that and vary it. Maybe different pellets will burn differently as well. I have also used it upside down the way it was intended to use with the uh, uh, Esbit tablets. And I can say right now, it wasn't fast, however, my test is to see if I can boil two cups of water with an Esbit or any stove for that matter in a reasonable period of time. And the reason I used to cho choose two cups of water is, well, a couple of things. First is uh, most mountain house or freeze dried meals use between one and two cups of water, usually two cups of water for a full meal. 
And so that's kind of a standard is, is just to compare one stove against the other, is how long does it take to bring two cups of water to a boil. The other thing is, for me, it has to be a rolling boil. And I don't mean just seeing bubbles forming on the bottom, but actually rolling boil. Reason being is that un unless I have to carry bottled water somewhere, I try to look for streams or lakes that I can pull water from to reduce my carry weight as much as anything and to ensure that it is safe to consume I need to bring it to a rolling boil so I did that with the Esba tablets and honestly this is one of the few stoves really one of the few stoves that I could bring two cups of water to a boil on a single Esba tab they I don't have a lot of good luck with Esba tabs but this stove the airflow is just right and it worked out perfectly on this stove. So what I want to do now is take the two stoves and set them up in my fireplace here in the woods and get a fire going with it because there's a few other things I want to say about these stoves as we go along. Okay, before we get a fire going in the two stoves, and I've only got one of them sitting in the fireplace right now, I wanted to show you how I would use it if I was setting it up with alcohol. Talk a, bit, a little bit about some of the challenges that come along with using it this way, and obviously some of the advantages. We're not going to use alcohol to boil water today. In fact, what I'm going to do in one of the stoves is use wood, in the other one use wood pellets, and just have the two of them going side by side. Okay, so this is the open end of the stove. This is my Tranja knockoff from Alex. So what I would do, and there is some alcohol in this, so I have to be careful I don't spill it. Take the lid, and drop that down inside on the bottom of the floor plate there. Take my alcohol stove, set that on top. Now, there's a couple of things that I can do, and it, it all depends on how you want to vary the, uh, the height to the bottom of any pot that you're going to use. If you lay this burn ring and I'm using the speed ring in this case because it's the more efficient of the two for using with the alcohol stove you can see what I did is I dropped it down below where it would lock in but I did not lock it in and there's a reason for that and what I found in use with the stove as the metal gets hot of course sometimes it expands not sometimes it does expand and I found at one point that when the when the tabs were at full length before I cut them off that that extension there that would lock in would sometimes get stuck and become very difficult to release. Combine that with the fact that I had started my testing with the original burn plate or boil plate, what I found is I couldn't get the boil plate off. I couldn't snuff the alcohol stove out. I had to wait for it to burn out of fuel. Uh, not a good thing if you've got a lot of fuel in your stove. So, uh, you know, maybe that makes the case for just putting just enough fuel in for whatever it is you're boiling. So that's the reason why I like having that turned so I could get access to the plate to make it easier to lift off and snuff out. The other thing is this gets very hot. No surprise there, of course. How are you going to get that plate off once it gets, uh, gets hot? You're pretty much obligated to take in a pair of pliers with you. Now, I carry a small Leatherman tool and uh, with me most of the time, but Mac recommends just a regular pair of pliers or the needle nose or blunt nose pliers for doing this with. But it is a good idea to use pliers to ha or have a pair of pliers at with you so that you can get that speed plate off, lift it off of the stove in order to snuff your alcohol stove out. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's something to think about is make sure you have a pair of pliers if you're going to be using this with alcohol. Okay, that's what I wanted to say about using it with alcohol is that there is a bit of a challenge you using the boil plate, and this, in this case, the speed plate. Now, there is an option, and you can play with this and see if this works for you, and that is to take this speed plate, either with the points or the pot rests standing up, or turned over standing down and set it on the very top of the stove above that gap there. Uh, it does make it easier for getting the pot the ring on and off. It makes it a little bit better in some cases for boil times but of course it also makes it a little bit less stable. So it's not my recommended way of using it. Interesting to note that Mac is working on a new prototype. If you follow him on Facebook or go to his website, you'll see that he has a new prototype that he's been testing extensively, and it incorporates some of the things that we're talking about right now. 
a higher area here for more exhaust. These uprights here are not as deep for locking the plate in. There is a shallow cutout in the top area where this can rest inside so that it's not so precarious and may fall off, yet make it very easy for removing when it needs to be removed. So such some of the advantages of uh, the new design. So uh, that just gives you an option. This still works perfectly fine. The new one may just be, have a few more of the advantages that you're looking for. Okay, what I'm going to do now is very quickly set these stoves up and get a fire going in them. Two of them at the same time, and the reason I'm doing that is uh, I'm going to use the pot of one water on one of them for a coffee and the other one for my lunch. So give me a few minutes and I'll get the two of these things set up and we'll get going. All right, this might be a little bit challenging, but I think it'll be fun to do just the same. Trying to have two stoves going at the same time, I find when I do do that, that there's always a lot of work going back and forth between the two to make sure that they're both working efficient, efficiently. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with wood pellets in the older version of the stove, the one from Mac that I have not, uh, uh, the one with the lower prongs on the top, the original one that's no longer for sale. It'll do just fine for showing how wood pellets will, will work with the stove. So the variation or the adaptation that I came up with is a piece of grill screen work that I curved to fit the inside of the stove and it's just small enough holes or large enough to uh, allow plenty of air in but not so large that pellets will follow through. So what I do is I just set that inside right there and I'll bring that up a little closer so you can see. So it just sits inside there to hold the pellets in place. Uh, there, there, I'm sure there is many other ways that you could arrive at the same, the same solution. And I have one cup of hardwood pellets that I'll pour down inside. And a few did drop through the bottom of the fire plate. Uh, just because it's a little bit bigger, the holes are a little bit bigger than the pellets are. But what happens when you drop pellets into a stove like this, they very quickly start to bind themselves up. So even if the holes are a little bit bigger, they still seem to work or still seem to catch on just fine. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to use a little bit of commercial fire starter that I will bury down inside of the pellets. And let's see if we can't get that lit. Yes, I know it's not uh, very traditional in terms of bushcraft, but uh, time is everything for me today right now. At least trying to get these two pots of water going so that I can have some lunch. Let's see if I can't do this. Did that catch? Not quite. All right. A little slow to catch. Do you know another way of doing wood pellets is to use some of your alcohol that you may be carrying to uh, ignite the wood pellets. It works, of course, it, then it seems like a bit of a waste of wood, of alcohol as well. Although the wood pellets will go for a lot longer than the alcohol ever would have. So but that's going to take some time. I will be cutting away. I'm not going to let this go completely in real time. I'll make sure that they are caught before we move on. And uh, there we go. Okay, so that one is started. Now I've got the feed port facing forward so you can see what I'm doing. And we can do this one of two ways, or actually there's, a, I suppose there's more than two ways of doing it. One way is if you have your wood all cut to the right height, you can do the Swedish fire torch, which you can see my wood is a little bit too tall. So I am gonna be feeding it through, starting with the fire in the bottom. And to do that, more for commercial fire starter, and do I have, yes I do, a little bit of dry pine twigs to get an initial fire going here. Won't take much, I can tell you that, to get this going. So I'm just going to drop a few of these pine twigs down inside. Yeah. And once they start burning, I will... Uh, Start feeding in the hardwood splits that I have here. All right, that should be enough just to get this going. Let's see if I can do the same thing with this, get this lit. Do you know, sometimes working with commercial fire starters is not as easy as you might think it is. Sometimes it's easier to work with the natural materials.
All right, see if they can't get that going there. So we'll work with this for a minute and then we'll let the fire develop a little bit and then I'll put the water on. All right, my pine twigs are catching. Put a few little splits inside on top, I guess. So while the, this is uh, starting to catch on, the fire is starting to catch on, I wanted to mention some of the pros, and there are a few cons that we do need to mention about these two stoves as well. First off, and this is the obvious one, these stoves are exceedingly strong. I don't think you, there is a pot too big or too heavy to go on top of these. that You can and not damage them. They're, they're a very, very robust item. Obviously very simple to set up and use. They can be used with wood, alcohol, solid fuel pellets. And then one thing I haven't tried is charcoal. So and I might do that at some point to see how well this will work with charcoal. They're not very big, but uh, you know they may hold enough charcoal for, for some cooking with. The bottom part of the stove, because the, those boil plates do lock into the bottom, that gives you a place where you can store a few things, like fire starters, for instance. Uh, you know, matches, whatever you need to store there. It won't give you a whole lot of space, like it's not quite big enough to store your alcohol stove in, but you can do that down inside. What I do is I can store my alcohol stove with one of the green cups that it came with inside of the Stanley Adventure Cook Kit, and of course that all does sit down inside of the stove just nice. All right. Here's something interesting. It is an extremely efficient uh, stove in terms of flame like you're going to see an excellent flame, flame pattern with these and it will work because even with the small size it seems even large pots are unaffected or don't affect the burning of the stove at all because of the excellent airflow this is something that I was reluctant to try. I'm still reluctant to try, but Mac has done it a number of times. I've watched him do it on video. And that is, uh, because of the heavy metal, it's going to take a while for these things to cool down once the fire is out. Mac says, just throw water on them. Or if you're, it's wintertime, throw them in the snow. Cool it down rapidly. Now that, uh, honestly, I, I hesitate to do that because I, I worry about hardening the steel up and uh, making it uh, less, uh, you know, either warp or harden where it might crack. Max says, nope, not an issue. This stove won't, do, it won't respond that way. It won't crack. He says, if it does start to get hard, metal hardened from the, from the tempering, or not the tempering, but from the hardening process, easiest thing to do is just to build another fire in it and then let it slow down naturally. And that will anneal it or retemper it to, a, to the original specifications. Okay, pellets are now engaged. There is some still some uh, of the fire starter burning with them, but the pellets are burning. As you can see, I'm starting to get a good flame pattern inside of the little wood stove. So in very short order, I'll be able to put on my two pots. Now, the challenge I'm going to have, the way that I have arranged this stove here is getting the pot ring on. I should have put the pot ring on before the fire got... Yeah, I think I'll wait a minute until some of the fire gets in, coals are developing, gets into the bottom, because I'll, I'll, then I'll have all my wood feeding in through here. But just to get it going, it would, didn't hurt. This is, again, where the pliers come in handy and a pair of leather gloves. So I am going to do that, and then once it gets going and I have the pots on, I'll bring it back. All right, so I've got the two pots of water on. On top of the wood pellets, I have my 12-centimeter zebra. Uh, I know it's smoking, and I'm not sure if that is an airflow issue that we've got going on right now. Some of it could be the, the uh, tires and creosote on the outside of the pots are starting to burn, because when you lift, you can see there's plenty of flame coming out of those wood pellets so but when I lower it back down it does smoke a little bit the pellets are not going out and they're not being smothered I can see the flames inside so that's working out well and on top of the other wood stove I have the boil ring set on side on, on top right now it went in fine once I, I let some of the wood burn down I'm feeding sticks in through the stove through the open port there is a beautiful steady flame pattern it's not, a, you know, really intense right at this moment. Of course, that's controllable by how much wood you put in and the size and the type of the wood that you work with as well. But virtually, I wouldn't say no smoke, but very little smoke coming off of the one that I'm using wood in. Now, there is something I want to mention. You see, I've got a piece of wood sitting here. And the reason I do is it helps maintain a good height for maybe not the best piece of wood. Let's see if I can find something a little bit chunkier to use for this. 
Now that, okay, here's one. This one might work a little bit better. Uh, I could just as easily have used a rock for this or maybe a little mound of something, I'm not sure what, but what I find is without something there, these pieces of wood, as they start to burn down, have a tendency to want to drop and fall back out. And the reason is, is the height of the feed port off of the ground. Now, not an issue if you're using long sticks. Long sticks can feed in and they will maintain a great angle. Once I get them inside, of course, there you go. Maintain a great angle like that and backwards to the ground. But shorter pieces of wood, now these are actually probably a very good length for doing this, but anything shorter than that wants to fall back out. So you have to keep an eye on it to make sure that it's not going to fall out. But again, longer sticks, not an issue at all. Don't overload it, Mark. Maybe a couple of shorter sticks or longer, thinner sticks. And if you can bring them in and cross them over up at different angles, you get more airflow through the wood and more airflow means more room for the fire to grow through the wood. So that's working out well. Let's lift off my pot. Nice flame, not too much, I haven't got it going super high right now. It doesn't need to be for what it's doing. Now these pellets are still smoking though, aren't they? But you can see there's plenty of clean flame coming off of the pellets. But a little bit more height, I think, at the top of the stove would allow for a little bit more exhaust air. You might see a little less smoke when you're using pellets. Keep an eye on this so it doesn't go out on me. It's got a good coal base going. Yeah, there's still flame in there. Okay, won't be long before my water comes to a boil and I'll be able to make some lunch and some uh, coffee. And then we'll come back for some more discussion around these two stoves. Okay, quick update. I just wanted to share this with you. I took the Adventure Stanley or the Stanley Adventure cook set off of the stove on the left because my water had come to a boil and you can see how well the flame is coming up through the stove there. It's just pretty much a perfect flame pattern coming up through that center hole. It does require feeding to keep it going like that, but that uh, that does help. Now, what I wanted to show you is the stove on the right, the one that has the wood pellets in it. I thought I'd give a little bit of an experiment, and I laid two pieces of my split hardwood on top of the stove to create some extra airflow. And what you see, greatly reduced amount of smoke. Now, my wood is starting to catch fire, but uh, this was just to see if, by increasing the gap from the top of the stove to the bottom of the pot, would increase airflow and, and work better with the pellets, and it does. All right, now the water in that pot is just about to a boil and I'll be able to make my lunch with it. And once I've had coffee and my, or have my lunch and have my coffee, we'll come back and close this video out. Okay, some final thoughts on the pack stove from Simple Theory Gear. Do you know, before I do though, there's one thing that I don't think I mentioned earlier in the video, and that is Mac has now also included another option of a solid steel plate that will fit into the slots the same way the uh, boil plates do, so that if you're using the stove on something that may not be as safe as you would like it to be, it gives a place for ash to catch underneath. Now, what uh, I did for myself, and I didn't show it today, is I used the top of a tin can of just the right size for doing that with but if you're in the process of purchasing one of these you may want to take a look at that plate and add it to your um, to to your collection of things that you're going to buy uh, optionally I suppose you, you could use some tin foil but it's nice to use something that's a little bit heavier duty like the steel plate that Mac has for it I personally would recommend going with the speed plate over the solid plate but it really depends on how you intend on using the stove the larger uh, boil plate is a little sturdier a little less likely to warp and you know i did find that there is some minor warping with this stove but boy it's just as easy and max says no problem bend it back and i said you're not worried about it breaking he goes i am not worried about it breaking if it does i'll make it right so yeah once in a while the prongs did bend a little bit especially on the bottom when i would kind of twist it into the earth and i just bent them back and i I haven't had a problem with it at all and I have the comfort of knowing that if it ever does break Mac will make it right so again some of these stoves as Mac went through the process of uh, of going, you know, the, the different productions and the different models, some of the tolerances were a little close. And what I mean by a little close, you want 
a little bit of looseness at the top and at the bottom because heat will tend to grab onto these things and especially if they warp at all you don't want them grabbing on so that you can't get them off so now I think Mac probably has that rectified so none of them are grabbing on and not letting go even so I like to let that stand or sit on top as I mentioned so that I can grab it with a pair of pliers and easily lift it off so yeah those are my thoughts on uh, just a few extra thoughts on the stove before closing out okay there's one other thing I wanted to say, and that was about Mac and his small company. Mac and his wife are the company. That's everybody. It's just he and his wife. He does have a young family, that, and he has a full-time job, and he's going to school. So this is an ambitious man that is trying to accomplish a lot. And this is an original American design, well-built, not copied anywhere, a reasonably priced, and a super strong product to boot. I mean, what more can you ask for? I would encourage you to take a look at Mac's website, and I'm going to put the information, of course, for the uh, Simple Theory Pack Stove in the show notes below in the video description. And let's just take a closer look. It may be something that works well for you. There is one other thing that I did not mention, it occurs to me. I guess that just shows you just how many options you can use with this stove is if you have an open fire and you've got a bed of coals and what you're looking for is some type of a stand to put your pot on take it turn it upside down drive it into the coals and now you can put your pot on top of this and it will act as a pot stand for an open fire for the hot coals so just another way of using the stove it's not going to be damaged by doing that in the least okay if you have one of these stoves i'd be interested in knowing what your experiences with it are i've had this well Mac, maybe you can correct me, but I think it's close to 10 months that I've had this in my possession, or at least the earlier one and then this one. But uh, I have a lot, I've had a lot of fires in this. There has been no warping of any significance, nothing that I couldn't bend back into shape very quickly. I expect this is going to go virtually forever. And with Mac's lifetime guarantee, you know, what, what really do I have to worry about it? Uh, yeah. Take a look. Have a look and see if this fits your needs. I think it works very well for what it's intended to do. In fact, uh, I can't think of another stove that works as well as this for its intended purpose. Okay, that's all I have to say. If you have any comments or any questions about this stove, please put them in the comments section below. But until I get back with, to you with another video, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.